How's it going out there? Welcome from H2 Tech Videos. Today I'm going to be doing the pros and cons of the Acer Iconia tablet A110. This is a 7 inch tablet uh, retailing for $249. And let me kind of walk you through just the basics of it. So uh, we do have our uh, USB, micro USB here for charging. Um, we have our uh, micro HDMI connection to run into your TV as well as a microphone on the side here. We have our micro SD slot here, headphone jack, uh, power and volume rockers right there, and our front facing camera on the top right there. Okay. Um, so if we jump right into the pros here, um, first things first, I'm really big on um, ports because the more ports a tablet has, um, the Pretty much the way I see it is the more options you have, the more things you can do with it. So the fact that it does have the micro SD slot is a big plus for me. Uh, simply one, because I use Slingbox a lot. So I like to you know run the tablet up to the TV and watch it bigger, as well as Hulu, Netflix. You don't necessarily have to have a DVD player, but you can watch those things from your tablet and run it right to your TV. So I love that it has that. It's a great plus. The next thing is that it does have a micro SD slot. So you can actually expand the memory up to 32 gigs. So that's for pictures, music, videos. Um, you have a great selection or also documents. You can really add in more of your files there with that uh, just by buying an extra micro SD uh, card. It does come stock with 8 gigs of internal memory and then you can expand that up to 32 gigs afterward. Now, one of the uh, the next pros is going to be uh, a custom feature from Acer, which is their uh, Acer Ring. Now, you're going to see this in two places. The first place is if you, uh, when the tablet is asleep and you turn it on, and you just tap the ring here, you have these shortcut apps that you can jump right to. And, and right now, uh, let me open and close there. If you move, it'll just open right up. So there's the internet gallery, Google search, or Gmail. You can customize those to any four apps that you like the best and you can launch it right out of the gate. So I love that feature. Now, um, uh, it, in my opinion, or not my opinion, but uh, as far as I know, uh, Acer was the first company to have those shortcut apps on the front. And I know um, last year the Galaxy S3 uh, did, did adapt that. So now you can actually have that on the front of yours as well as the Galaxy Note, um, the Galaxy Tab 2, because um, I know that originally the Acer A110, which was their 10-inch tablet, had that feature. So that was something that was, um, I believe it started with Acer. I've always liked that feature because I love that you can just jump right to the apps that you like first, opposed to having to unlock the tablet first and then find the ones you like. Now you can also access the Acer Ring from your home button right here. If you take the home button, hold and just kind of move wait is it yeah you hold the home button and move it up you can either go to Google now or you can go to the Acer ring and you get this nice little menu here or again these are your your shortcuts here these are actually four separate shortcuts you can actually have another set of shortcuts that open up when you're uh, actually in the tablet after you've unlocked it you can do a screen capture really easy from there as well as you can look at the last couple of web pages that you have opened up as well. So um, just love that. It's nice and creative. It's cool. It's you know, artistic as well. And um, especially websites you visit a lot, we can go ahead and go to Google and it'll launch right to there just like that. And I'm not going to put the internet because the battery is a little low right now. Um, next thing is going to be that the keyboard is pretty smooth. Uh, let me just kind of give you an example here. I'm going to tap in the Google search. So, hello, my name is Joe. So, here's the thing this is a pro and a con. Oh, sorry, you couldn't see the screen when I typed there. But um, it's a pro because the, the keyboard is actually not too spaced out, so typing is, is fairly easy. The, the uh, con is that the autocorrect is terrible. It's really whack. So like I'm trying to type hello and it changed it to heal. 
Okay, so now the reason I made it a pro is because you can simply go in the settings, you can turn off autocorrect, so you're not stuck with the terribleness of an unperfected autocorrect. Okay, so typing is, um, again, it's pretty good on there. Uh, I like the keyboard. Normally I switch the keyboard out and use an app called SwiftKey, but this one I would actually consider using the stock keyboard that it comes with. So let's go ahead and go back home here. I'm going to go ahead and connect the internet. Because uh, the last pro here that I'm going to talk about is web browsing. And I felt that it had a really smooth web browsing experience, especially when you used the, the, uh, the Chrome browser. Uh, I was actually doing some searching on Best Buy's website. And this is it right here. I was actually looking up some of the specs on the tablet. And, uh, you know, the website, you know, nice and quick. You can do the double tap to zoom in on certain areas, especially when you have to type in a certain spot. Um, you see how it kind of zooms in for you so you can kind of see the area better. We can get rid of the keyboard here. And uh, it seemed very responsive. Obviously, you know, the text looks smaller because I am looking at uh, the web page right now in the desktop mode. But even in the areas that are small, um, it's very responsive when I tap. So I like that. I feel like the tablet you know again overall has a good web browser because again that's that's a key feature you're going to be using a lot people buy tablets to browse the web and do email and a little bit of word processing and games that's about it so uh, this is the key feature you want to make sure your web browser is nice and quick and smooth and is a good experience so alright so let's move on to the cons uh, first con is that this thing is thick and it is heavy it is not a light tablet uh, if you were to hold this and hold a Nexus 7, you would say, wow, because there's a big difference. I don't like bulky tablets. That's one thing. What market of people are going to want to buy this thing if it's heavy when you carry it around? You know, it's it's always nice to have a tablet that's light, that's thin, that you literally forget that you have it with you because that's how light and, and comfortable it is. So I felt like the design wasn't my favorite. And... It, you know, it, again, it doesn't look anything special. It's just a very plain and ordinary, nothing special uh, in the look. So, had to make that a con. The next con is going to be that the internal memory is very low. 8 gigs is very low, especially if you're big on loading apps. And really, if you're into games, it, it's out of the question. Now, here's the funny part. It does have a Tegra... Uh, Tegra 3 processor, so it actually runs games well, but you can't get any games on there because you're capped at 8 gigs of internal memory. Um, why they did this, I don't really understand, because guess what? Next to 7, you can get a 16 gig for, I think, what is it, uh, 150 or 200 bucks? This tablet is 250, it only has 8 gigs of memory. So, I feel like that was a fail right out of the gate. Now, if you notice, when the Nexus 7 came out, it did only have 8 gigs of memory, but they bumped it up to 16 and 32, so they actually gave you other options really quick. Acer normally puts out a tablet, and they're done. They're like, oh, well, if people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. I disagree with that strategy. Acer needs to come out with an updated version that has 16 gigs, and they need to drop the price because right now it's not even competitively priced. And that's my next con is that 250 is very overpriced for a 7-inch tablet when your specs don't even match up to the similar 7-inch tablets on the market. Um, for example, if you were to compare this with the, the Nexus 7, which is 149, 16 gigs of memory, okay, the Nexus beats it. It's a hundred dollars cheaper. It has more internal memory, and that's just going over basic specs. You can kind of go into a deeper review and see that the Nexus blows out of the water in a bunch of other categories too. So I didn't like that. Kindle Fire is one ninety nine. Kindle Fire is also sixteen gigs as well. This is eight gigs. So I don't really know what market Acer was really trying to go after because I felt like, you know. The next tablet up from this is the iPad Mini, which is overpriced, but guess what? It's Apple, and people will buy Apple. Acer doesn't have the name and reputation to sell things when they're overpriced. Acer is known to be a lower price brand. If I was Acer, to be really honest, I would mark this tablet down to $129. Mark it super low. You're going to sell a ton of units, and people are going to buy it, but people aren't going to buy it for $249 when there's nothing special about it. So, um... 
kind of got into a little rant there, but I'm just being honest. I didn't I didn't feel like um, 249 was a smart decision, and I hope they drop the price in a hurry or they're not going to sell any of these. Uh, the next con is going to be that there's a, the standby time is really bad, and what that is is when you turn off the tablet and you're not using it, the battery is still draining. So, for example, I may have like used it in the morning, put it down, the battery is at 75%. I'll come back tonight, the battery is at 11%, or my tablet's dead already. That's a big problem for me because I tend to put my, I tend to use my tablet in spurts. So I may use it for a couple of hours a day, and I may use it again for three days. I don't want to come back to a dead tablet, and I don't want to have to charge it every day like a cell phone. Um, there are a lot of other tablets out there that have good standby time, so that you can put it down for a little while and pick it up later, and it will still hold a substantial charge. So. Um, that was a big con. I hate when, when the battery is not set to last. So, I think in normal use it has about an 8 hour battery. So, if you're using it continuously, you will get 8 hours. But if you're not using it, guess what? It's still burning. Um, next thing is going to be that uh, there's no rear camera. And, and I gave that same con to the Nexus 7 and the Kindle Fire HD. We're in a realm where, guess what? People like to take pictures. Okay? Um, I don't use my tablet necessarily to take pictures of people, but I'll take pictures of like objects, things, whatever, and I like to save it on my tablet. So even if you wanted to use an app that checks prices, again, that's a great reason to have a rear camera. With a front-facing camera, it just makes it really inconvenient. So um really felt they should have, if, if it had a rear camera, it might make it a little bit more valuable. And then I would kind of understand 249 price point, even though it's still high. I want to say at least it has a feature that sets it apart from the Nexus 7 and Kindle Fire HD. But guess what? It doesn't. So there that is. Um, and again, the last con is going to be that I just felt like this tablet is just, it's very plain. Uh, it does have stock Android on it. Uh, but it's just, it's so plain. The screen is kind of washed out. It's not really like very bright and vibrant. So it's just, this tablet is so plain and mediocre. So to charge 249 I felt like it was just way overpriced. And um, if I was going to give it a rating, if whether we're going between our uh, worth it or a waste, I would give it the waste. I would say this is not worth it. It is a waste. Don't spend 249 on it. Wait, wait till it drops down to 199, 149, 129 if they're smart. Uh, but if not, skip this tablet. Guess what? The Google, uh, excuse me, the Galaxy Note 8 is coming out. Uh, or probably by the time you watch this, it'll probably already be out. That tablet is amazing. That tablet is worth the money. It does a million things more than this does. It has the built in stylus. Um, it does have Samsung's TouchWiz over it, so the interface is a little bit more, uh, you know, it's beautiful. and it, it, it does, It's just a better user experience. I don't know what would make someone want to buy this over all the other options out there because it, there's nothing that just, there's nothing that separates this from any other tablet out there. As far as I'm concerned, this tablet could not be out and nobody would even miss it. I hate to be harsh about it, but I just felt like, again, I, I was very unimpressed. And again, Acer is known to have tablets in a great price point. For example, their their A one ten their A two ten tablet, I believe that's what it was, the, the, the two ten. When the iPad was out for five hundred, that was out for like three hundred. And people bought it because it was competitively priced. The person that wanted a tablet but couldn't spend iPad money was like, Hey, I can get an Acer. Guess what? Now you can't do that. Hands down, people are gonna go for the Nexus seven all the way because it's cheaper more storage and it actually is a better tablet. I'll buy a cheaper product. I'll, I'll, I'll buy a lower model if it's if the price is lower. Oh, see look at that. Battery died right now. I'm, I'm not even using it and the battery is draining itself. So just another thing there. Anything, uh, anyway what I was trying to say was that you know um, I would buy this for 129 Guess what? I'm not expecting a great experience. If I know it's if I know it's a mediocre product, if the price is low enough, I'll still buy it. But if it's a mediocre product and it's it's priced silly like that, for example, way more than a lot of the other tablets out there, I'm definitely passing on it. So I recommend that you pass on it. If you already bought it, it is what it is. Um, it will give you the Android experience, but 
uh, I just feel like you, you're going to overpay for it if you do get it. So, anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful. Make sure you like the video if you did find it helpful. Subscribe to SG Tech videos and keep watching, alright? Have a good one.